So it's actually been an entire week now since Courtney finished up working for me. And there's definitely been a big adjustment period over that time, but I've really sat back and had to think about things and I feel like I have a really good plan of attack for moving forward. So in this video today, I wanna to talk about that, what my next steps will be post having Courtney working for me. And I'm gonna show you a bunch of other stuff that I've been up to over the last five days. It's been a really busy period, there's a lot going on, even more so now that it's just me in here. So let's kick it off with a private pick that I was able to pick up last week. So I left the house at 6.30 this morning and I've just got back. I went to Ballina up in New South Wales, or down I should say, in New South Wales to collect this suitcase for $300. I was only there with her for five minutes, so no filming of the actual purchase, but I can unbox all of this for you now and show you exactly what I've been able to get my hands on. So here it is. We have a bunch of film and digital cameras. I'm gonna go through this bag in just a moment because this bag here is absolutely the best one. This is the second best one. It's a film camera that is, it's a Canon Primer AS1 and it is incredibly clean, in excellent condition. These things are selling for about $230. It's got the old school, um, actually I should say, the best thing about this one is it's actually a waterproof film camera, hence why it's worth so much money. Um, Diana has been incredible because she has put so much extra work attention, effort, energy into this sale. Um, she's given me everything that I need in little lunch bags here. As you can see, everything's sort of itemized out in their lunch bags. And she's also gone to the extent of handwriting everything that is in each of these lunch boxes or lunch bags. There's a few other digital cameras here. We've got a Caplio R5. Um, we've also got a Caplio R40 there as well. This one over here is a Fuji film. Uh, we've got the, I think it's the F550 EXR. Um, this one here is really nice as well. It's a Minolta 70W. Um, then over here, we've got a Canon Primer Zoom Mini with its manual. And then we've also got the Pentax Optio LS1000. Um, that is everything along with the big guy that I'm gonna show you in a second. But this down here as well, I've just put all of this on the shelf, which I've already gone ahead and listed. Um, I'm gonna work on the other listings now, but we've got some additional features here, like some, some filters that she's got, some accessories. Um, she had a spare couple of charges. Um, so I've gone ahead and I've listed those charges up on an individual basis. In here, we've got a, a Panasonic Luminex DMC F270 a DSLR camera there and that one, I've already gone ahead and listed that up. Um, all of these cameras and lenses are basically being able to be listed up for you know, around about the $100 sale price. So when we're buying all of this for $300, you can only imagine what the total resale value is gonna be of all of these items. And this is another example as well. This is some additional film and I can sell these films one a piece at $20. So I can list these up for what is 19 different packets I can list that up as one for $20. So that's like $400 worth of film. Here it is. We've got the Pentax K1000 film camera. An incredible camera in amazing condition. If we have a look at this, as you can see, this thing is really, really cool and clean for the, the vintage nature that it is. I don't know how old this camera is, but the fact that it is in that good a condition is just really, really exciting. This one here is definitely gonna make me all of my money back. The $300 that we spent, these cameras alone sell for about $350. And then we've got all of this as well. So I might be able to list this up for about $450 to $500. Uh, and I think the sell through rate on these things are pretty decent on eBay as well. So what I do really need to say is a massive thank you to Diana, who is a viewer of the channel, as I mentioned. We haven't spoken for two years, but she's continued to watch the videos and she actually had all of these within the family. Uh, a $300 purchase price was incredibly generous considering the resale value is gonna be significant. And I'm really, really excited to go ahead and list these up today and hopefully have them go on sell in a pretty quick space of time. It absolutely poured on Saturday, which made me think that the flea market today wasn't gonna be that great. And you'll see here that it was pretty quiet. There wasn't a lot of vendors. I think the rain had scared a lot of people off, but I still wandered out late in the day just to see what was going on. As you can see, it's a pretty quiet flea market today. I don't have my mic on. I don't have a backpack like I normally would. We're out here buying road. But we're finding a couple of things. And it's a very, I would say a quarter full market stall today, but trying to do our best. Um, 
chain what reaction. Is this? Video. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna do it. I got no idea but I'll do it. It just looks good. So sometimes you gotta do that. Collector. Yep. So what turned into a very opportunistic turn up to the flea market today, I don't even have my phone on. My phone is dead. Um, I was too busy watching the Brisbane Lions win the grand final yesterday and I didn't charge my phone before I went to bed. But uh, a lot of rain, I didn't think that there would be anything on, but then we stumbled in and the first thing I saw were these, these wrestling belts. And I, I honestly don't know how they were still sitting there because we're able to get them for, for five dollars. So we're paying two dollars fifty each here. Now I know that these wrestling belts can sell for really good money. And we had a look on eBay and this belt there was a comp selling for fifty dollars it sold for. Um, but then this one here is about thirty. So you got thirty and fifty, there's about potentially eighty odd there. And we only paid the five. Um, then we got this as well fats. Come in on this. Um, chain reaction box set, we've got, this is a BMX, that's BMX bike chains. Um, there's no comps on eBay for this thing. Um, literally only two international listings for $20 and $30. It is, fortunately, region is all. Um, so that means it'll play anywhere around the world, which is great. Um, but there are no sales history on eBay for this thing. So it is complete. All discs are in great condition. I'm going to try and list that one up for about $25. I paid five, 25, stab in the dark. It'll just be a bread and butter DVD. And then this this um this Manning jersey, I think we could probably get about $40 to $50 dollars for that. I haven't checked the comps on eBay, but just knowing rough figures, I'm only buying sports jerseys when it comes to clothing. Uh, and this one was a pretty good clean one. It is a size medium, and the NFL is just kicking off over in America right now. So it's a really nice time over the next six months to have a bunch of NFL being played. I reckon this one should go on to sell pretty well too. So what do we pay? $20? And I reckon there's going to be 40, let's not even count that, 40, 80, 120. So we've turned 20 into 120. And how long have we been at the flea? 15 minutes. Not bad. Something that's really been frustrating me of late, more so than ever before this weekend, uh, has been buyers that buy an item but they don't make their payment immediately and they don't even follow up with a message to let us know when they're going to make their payment. We've got five items from this weekend that are sitting there awaiting payment. At one point, there was actually seven items awaiting payment and we only had 14 sales over the period. So one third, 33% of my items were sitting there in awaiting payments and some of them had been multiple days to this point. Um, so I think eBay has got it really set up quite poorly for us as sellers. These seven items that I've sold that I haven't actually received the money for are not available for purchase on eBay for somebody else to buy. I've got to hang around, wait around without any understanding of when these people are going to make their purchase. Um, so that is a, an incredibly frustrating thing, almost the most frustrating thing I think as an eBay seller. For me, I'm actually deleting that listing and I'm relisting it within two days. The five day policy for me is just unacceptable. I'm never going to wait five days for an item to be paid for. I'm going to go ahead and cancel their order if I haven't heard from them in two days. And I'm also going to send them a couple of payment reminders before that as well. If, I, if the payment reminders don't work, I'm then sending them a personal message with my own scripture, um, not that just auto generated send. I'm actually saying, hey, when can I expect payment from you? I don't mind if it's delayed, just let me know a day and a time that you expect to make your payment on. If I get a response from them on that, then I will wait until that day that they said that they would make payment. And if they haven't by that point, then I go ahead and cancel it then. Um, so that's kind of how I tackle the awaiting payment issue. Um, but eBay needs to probably step in and build something into the, especially the best offers. Um, I think they could build in a, a setup where you issue your card details prior to the best offer being sent out. So that if it does get accepted, your card should just automatically transact as a buyer. And that way we get our payment, the item gets sold, and we can ship it out on time effectively as it should be. So I just thought I'd raise that in this video. I'm just sitting here so frustrated on a Monday morning with five payments uh, that I'm waiting on. I really wanna finish the month on a, on a nice and strong number. And I've got about $200 in sales that I'd love to get my hands on that ultimately, I think I'm gonna to have to cancel because these guys after two or three days have not got in contact with me and it is incredibly frustrating. Bit of a different Monday morning this week, guys. The first Monday morning without Courtney. So no setting up the post for her to do. It's gonna be on me to get done today. And Mondays are always our busiest day of the week. So this is gonna be a good little test today to see if I can manage the workload. Um, I will update you guys on my thought processes around how I plan to, I guess, run things as a business from here on in, whether it be myself solo or whether I'm gonna bring on any additional hands 
uh, like we've had with Courtney over the last year and nine months. But um, the first thing that I wanted to have a bit of a chat to you about is my projections for the rest of this year. Today is the last day uh, of September, the 30th, and we've got three months left for the rest of the year. So this is a really great pivotal moment um, for me to kind of reset how I want things to look for the end of the year, the 31st of December. If we have a look at the numbers, $90,000 or $91,000 uh, so far in revenue this year. Um, we've hit the average sale price that we've wanted to try and work our way up towards. As you'll see there, there's a 17.8% increase in average sale price. We've worked really hard. That's been a lot of Courtney's work um, to get it to that point. The, the fees are at 16%. We're running a lot of ads. We're doing our promoted listings. So that's why that increase of 15 to 16% has occurred. Um, but we've also sold 20% less in stock. And we've only sold 2,258 items this year, um, which is a, a massive drop off the volume that we'd done last year. Obviously the average sale price was a whole lot less last year as well. So we've actually made more money. We've got a lot more profit coming in on that $91,000, even though we're 5% down in revenue, uh, because we're shipping out less items. There's less money being put into the biggest expense of an eBay business, which is postage or the sourcing of the products that you you are trying to sell. So for us, I'm actually really, really happy with the position that we're in today. My issue is we've lost Courtney and I need to plan out how things are gonna look for the next three months and then what things are gonna look like into 2025. Um, so my goals for this year are to actually go from what was originally 130,000 in revenue that we were striving towards, um, which is the number that we actually did last year when we had Courtney. We just wanted to do the same amount of revenue again. Um, I'm gonna pivot that to $123,000. That's what I now want the revenue to be at the end of the year with myself doing the next three months by myself. I don't anticipate hiring anybody until 2025. I just wanna see how I go and not rush into things and, and really think about things um, before I make my next move. Um, so the way I wanted to structure it out for the next three months is a 10K October, a 12K November, uh, and then a 10K December. That's 32,000, that will get us from 91 to 123, and I would be very, very happy with that result, um, considering we've only had Courtney for the nine months of the year. Um, how are we going so far at the moment in the sense of our sales for the month of September? Uh, if we go to the month, we are looking, well, pretty solid. We have a consistent month of $10,000. This is obviously the last day of the month, so 9,925 with an entire day's worth of sales to go. Um, we're going to shoot ourselves into maybe 10,200, 10,300, which matches what I want to be able to do over the next couple of months. Um, I think Black Friday will get us a little bit more for the month of November. Um, hopefully, we can pick up about two grand extra um, for the Black Friday sales period. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with the month of September. It's just whether or not from here, uh, we can hit the goals that I've now reset for myself. So we'll just have to see how we go. Now we actually had a massive sales day yesterday. $705 came through yesterday. One of the sales is worth $450. So stick around for that. We're gonna rank things from the cheapest to the most expensive in this what sold. There are 14 sales that I wanna take you through. Now I said last video that we had a new helper, which we do. Perry, give me. Say hi. <laughs> Say hi to everybody. <laughs> You're gonna help me pick out all of these sales. Good boy, good boy. Kicking things off at number 14, we have Sonic and the Black Knight on the Nintendo Wii. We've got $22.95 for this one. It's gonna go into a medium track post envelope for $6.50. Pretty much another bread and butter video game sale. We're doing a lot of them, only three shells left to go. We're trying to actually buy video games. So if you guys are trying to sell anything out there, we're always looking to purchase. So let us know on Instagram or maybe a comment on this video and we'll pop out and buy it. Sticking with the video games, we've got another one, a classic. Call of Duty number one and number two. This one sold as a bundle for $28. This is one of those ones where you would probably go ahead and put them into a big group allocation, one of the listings that we've got right up the top there in our bundles. Um, but I thought being the same game, we may as well just go ahead and make it a two video game listing. Um, and that can increase the sale price to 20 to 30 odd dollars, uh, often at times, and then you can put it into the one shipping bag. Um, so this will go into a satchel, $8.50. So when you sell it for 28, it turns into a $19.50 sale price, and we would have paid about two bucks each for these games. So it's like four into 19 plus postage. 
So it actually makes it worthwhile to create that listing. If we sold them both individually, they would have had to both go into those medium track post envelopes. Postage would have been $13 and it wouldn't have been worth it. So always look at your numbers, do your comp research to see what these things are worth and then list it up accordingly to maximize your profit. Next one up is a DVD bundle. Now I've done some moving around of our inventory here. So I've actually got a DVD tub here. I've got two here, 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 and now down the bottom here. So what that leaves us, well, we've got, we've picked up an extra nine DVD tubs. All of this wall here is now DVDs as well. And I've only got three tubs of clothing, some PlayStation and electronic sort of stuff here, some consoles. And then this is what I need to go ahead and work on. There's six tubs down here, which is just like, a bunch of miscellaneous sort of listings that I don't want to go ahead and list up or at least buy any more of into the future. Um, so I know now that this is my this is my working space when I'm doing my store maintenance. You should always be doing store maintenance at any point in time along the journey of being an eBay seller. And that is my area of focus over the next few weeks. Um, not too bad, it's only six tubs, but they are all pretty full. I just condensed them the other day. So as you can see, that tub is chocker full. So it will take quite a while to work through those six tubs, but I think it's a very, very healthy thing for you guys to be doing. Um, number 27 is the next sale. We've got a six series set here of Doc Martin. Um, so six series Doc Martin, this one sold for $28. A little bit annoying in the sense that it was only a $28 sale price, but it's gonna have to go into a medium satchel. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna send that off for maybe 10 to $12. Uh, which brings the sale price down to 16 or $18. And we would have paid a little bit to buy these as well. So we're not actually making a whole lot of money here. Can't exactly remember if this was $1 or $2 per DVD, uh, but two, four, six of them, that means it's either six or 12. There's not gonna be a lot of profit off this sale. So you have gotta crunch those numbers. Always like the uh, Call of Duty video games, really gotta make sure that is this actually worth listing up? Because based on a $28 sale price, I would argue that it would need to have been about 35 or 40 for it to be a worthwhile sale. And before we jump into the top 10, this is number 11. We've got a PlayStation 4 game, Crimes and Punishment, Sherlock Holmes. Again, a $28 sale price for this one here. Not too bad, we're only buying it for $2. And again, it's gonna go into that track post envelope. Nice, it's a really nice, like new game. There won't be any problems with this getting to the buyer. Uh, no scratches on disc, it's got its manual. Uh, which is pretty much everything you'd want out of a video game. So $6.50 shipment, 28 sale price, $2 purchase price, uh, pretty good numbers. Now, this next sale is this t-shirt right here. We don't do a lot of clothing, uh, but this one has come through in a couple of weeks. It's the Anti-Social Social Club, completely genuine. It's actually new with tags there as well. Only issue with this is it's a size small. Um, so it is actually a really tiny t-shirt. Um, it's almost like an extra small, to be honest with you. That's why it's really important to do your measurements. Um, when it comes to clothing, I always do my measurements um, armpit to armpit. I do top to bottom. And then with the t-shirt, I don't bother with sleeve length, but if you had a long sleeve tee, I would also give the measurement of how long the sleeve is too. So um, definitely would have put the, uh, the measurements via centimeter into the listing for this t-shirt. So hopefully no issues with regards to returns. When you don't put um, centimeter measurements into your listings as a clothing seller, you're gonna see a really, really high return rate on your items, and that's just something you don't want. Um, so a perfect way to get around that is to just do a tiny bit of extra work up front and put those uh, centimeter measurements in. $29 or $30 worth of a sale price uh, for this one here. This one has actually come through as a bit of a freebie, um, not on consignment from this shoe deal, uh, which is consignment. There's a bunch of high-end shoes up here, and as you'll see in these past videos over the last few weeks, they're just not selling. Um, so I'm gonna work with the person that I'm consigning this with, who is a viewer of the channel and he does watch these videos. And I may end up having to give these back to him because market value for these shoes is probably gonna fall below his expectation. So when we're splitting this 50-50 in profit, it's not gonna leave him with a lot of money. He's gonna take a big loss on his initial purchase price for these shoes. Um, so a little bit disappointing because we drove to Brisbane, picked all these up, and then tried to list them up at his purchase or at his sale prices, but it just unfortunately isn't getting any traction on eBay. And it's been over about four to six weeks now. Um, so they're probably gonna end up going, and I'm still undecided about my shoes over there as well. But yeah, a little bit disappointing, but we did get a win out of this with a $30 sale price on one of his t-shirts that he ultimately just threw in. 
How good was the grand final over the weekend? No surprises that this one's gone on to sell the Toyota AFL Grand Final 2023 hat. Um, so a really cool hat that Courtney and I found on Courtney's last thrift day last week. Um, timely fine because the grand final was held on Saturday. This sold on Saturday morning before the game started. So um, we sold a Sydney Swans jersey. They played in the grand final. That sold in the weeks leading up to the grand final. Um, so you've always got to think about that. What's happening in the world right now that you have a product for that might be able to go on to sell? Being a $2 find in a thrift store, I priced this one up for $35 and we got the full asking price of $35. Now, because it was a timely purchase, could I have listed it up for $40, maybe $45? Well, at this time of year, potentially. Uh, if we found it in January when the footy's not on, um, this might only be worth about $25 to $30. But we went in the middle, we got a $35 sale price. I'm going to put it into a box and I thought after $2 purchase in a thrift, that was excellent. The next one is in tub number 85, another DVD set. We have Hawaii 5.0. Here it is here. So there's actually seven seasons in this sale. So again, it's gonna go into a medium satchel. Uh, this one has only sold for $40. And I'm pretty sure it was a best offer that might've been accepted on this because I believe Hawaii 5.0 should sell for a little bit more. In a past vlog, we spoke about every season being worth $10. Um, so that would argue that this should be worth about 70. So I have to go back and have a look at the comps to know exactly what a true value of this is, but it seems like it's slightly underpriced. Um, it's not a complete series set though, um, so it always lowers the price a little bit. Um, but 40 bucks into a medium satchel, again, we're probably paying seven to $14 worth of a purchase price. So we're probably not making a lot of profit off this one either. Um, but still, it's another sale. We've got a lot of DVDs to sell. So it was good to get another one out the door. I don't know if I ever mentioned, but I got an offer of $1,200 to sell all of these shoes. I'd love to know in the comments if you think I should take $1,200. It would be about an average uh, sale price of $10 a shoe, which would be almost my money back. Um, let me know, do you think based on the shoe market right now and the way that I've been umming and ahhing about my shoes, uh, should I sell them or should I keep them? Or should I ask for more than $1,200? Let me know. Um, all right. We did get one shoe sale, but this really highlights how poorly shoes are going for me at the moment. Um, even though I'm incredibly grateful, this is from Hugh, who is a viewer of the channel. Um, he bought these for $40, some really good Nike, uh, I think they're the Daybreak, potentially. I can't exactly remember the, the exact model of this shoe. Um, it's in incredible condition. Hugh jumped on, he bought these, and he said, hopefully this helps you clear out your shoes. Um, so that's great because I do need to clear out my shoes and a $40 sale price is a good one. Um, being the size that it is and being the fabric that it is, we should be able to squish that up without it damaging it and get it into a small satchel for you. Uh, so a $40 sale price, $8.50 in shipment. Um, these are actually bought at the flea market and I think, did we pay $10? I reckon uh, 10 or 15. 10 or 15. Yeah, yeah, it was. So, you know, either if it, if it was 10 or if it was 15, that's still going to be some good profit in that. Um, being a $40 sale price. Hopefully it was just the 10. But yeah, anyway, good pair of shoes. One more out the door. We do have a second pair of shoes that was able to sell. It's coming up later in the video. All right, I think this is probably the best selling board game on eBay. I could be wrong, but I have just sold this board game so many times. If it's not the best selling game on eBay, it's the easiest board game to find when you're out thrifting because it's so damn popular. I feel like everyone has this board game, but this is the one that you wanna be finding. This is the second edition. It just sells a little bit quicker on eBay and it sells for a better average sale price. The annoying thing about this game is that you do need to work out how you're gonna go ahead and ship it off. You could put it into another box, but then to try and find a box this shape is quite difficult. Um, so what I've started to do is I've started to butcher's paper and then bubble wrap this game and I send it off as a bubble wrap package. So it's got bubble wrap on the outside, the sender label goes on top and I've never actually had any problems with the buyer receiving it like that. It's a pretty unique way of doing shipment I think. I don't think too many people out there do it that way but the butcher's paper hides what the item is and then the bubble wrap on top protects it. So I feel like it kind of ticks all the boxes when it comes to shipment. Um, but this game here sold for $45. I actually have a second one, so much so, because they are so popular um, down here in the tub that I need to go through a bit later on for store maintenance. Um, but I don't think I'm gonna manipulate the price because I've got that listed up for 45 as well. And I think we're gonna probably get it. I think the, uh, the original logo board game where that second edition isn't written across the top, I think that's worth about 35. 
So either way, whichever one you find, you're always going to get pretty good money. Have you seen the movie Happy Gilmore? Yes. One of the best movies. Great movie. One of the best movies, an Adam Sandler classic. You may have remembered this jersey off Happy Gilmore. It's the jersey that he plays his golf in on that show or on that movie. Um, I went as Happy Gilmore to a dress-up party, I want to say maybe eight years ago, six years ago, something like that. And it has sat in my cupboard ever since I had a million beers on this thing. And I'm so surprised after pulling it out of the cupboard that there is only a couple of marks down here on it. That would have been my beer stains from about six years ago. And I've done nothing about it because I don't know how you wash these jerseys. Um, anyway, I pulled it out of the cupboard when I was doing a bit of a personal cull of my clothing. And I went, how cool is this? I'm never going to wear this again. Somebody else might want it out there. Jerseys sell really well on eBay. Um, so I bought it for $60 online all those years ago. And I whacked it back up on eBay for $60 and we got it. And this only sold in the space of about two weeks. So jerseys of any kind, any sporting code, do really, really well. I'm going to do my very, very best to roll this up in a nice little neat way to get it into a small satchel. Don't know if we can do it because there is a lot of fabric, but we're going to give it a try for a small satchel at $8.50, which will mean we'll net about a $45 return on this. And after having a million beers on it and wearing it for a dress-up party, I think that's a pretty good result off a six-year-ago $50, $60 purchase. Now, here's a DVD series that I have not actually found a lot of from a sense of its later seasons. We've got the TV show Outlander here. Now, for me, when I'm out thrifting, I find Outlander one to three all the time. And you probably, you guys probably do too, but this one here is um, season one all the way up to series six. And we've got a $65 sale price on this. Um, so first time I've ever come across it in its complete entirety. I've uh, got a really quick sell through rate on this as well because it was complete. Um, but it will, as you guys know, being how, how many DVDs it is there, I think there's seven there, um, it'll go in a medium satchel. So it will cost about that 10 to $12 in shipment. But when you sell it for 65, that's a much better return in profit. Um, so always when you can, try and complete your DVD sets. But as I've always said in the past, list up what you have as a partial listing and then complete it as you go. Here's our second and final shoe sale from over the weekend. You guys may have remembered uh, we went out and we found these shoes, the On Clouds, Courtney and I, last week. Um, we also found these last week as well, the Kayanos. These were in the same thrift store that Courtney and I found those On Clouds. These were only $10 in store and we liked the fact that they were plain black because we feel like people can wear them when they go to work and it just stands a better chance for this shoe to be sold in this colorway. You can obviously use them as a running shoe as well, but there's just multiple purposes when they're all black. And you could even wear them at school as well. So many different ways to utilize an all black shoe. Um, but first of all, the model is an Asics Gel Kayano, and this Kayano is actually a 29. I think the Kayanos are up to 30 right now. So this is a really modern shoe of Kayano. You can get them all the way back to I think a 20 or a 21. Um, excellent condition on the, on the soles. There's still plenty of wear left in these as well. Um, so I was really excited for all of those reasons when Courtney and I found them last week. We actually found two shoes that were black Kayanos, different sizes. The other Kayano was a 27, and that one sold for $70. This Kayano has gone ahead and sold for $70 as well. So within the space of a week, these two black Kayanos have sold for $140 on eBay, and all up we paid $18 for two pairs of shoes when we were out thrifting just last week. So as much as I complain about the shoe category, I'm never going to complain about a Kayano, and I'm very, very confident I'm never going to complain about an OnCloud, because uh, they sell equally as well too. They are a small long cloud though, really tiny size. So that might cause it to, I guess, sit for a little bit longer. Uh, but these ones, these ones, I don't care what you sell on eBay. If you find them out thrifting, just go ahead and list it up and you'll get a good return. Coming in at number two, we have our first $100 sale. Uh, and I listed this up just yesterday. We obviously went through all of the cameras that we bought off Diana. Um, well, this one has already gone on to sell. This is the Fujifilm FinePix F550 EXR. It comes in its camera bag. It comes with its original charger. I don't believe, she's so nice, Diana. As you guys know, she's obviously gone ahead and written out all the information for this uh, listing for me. So um, there is a battery in there. There is a memory card in there as well, or an SD card. Um, so she's got me completely covered there. Um, it is a complete camera set. and. This has gone on to sell in three minutes on eBay yesterday. I listed this up at two o'clock and it sold at two o'clock. 
and we got the full asking price of $100. Now, in those situations, you may often think that you undersold the item, but I spent so much time on pricing and I looked and analyzed this and there was only one listing for this camera and they tried to list it up for $185. And then when I went into the solds, $100 was going to be the medium price point that it sold for. There was a few that sold for $115, $120, and then there were a couple that sold for $50 to $80. So I went ahead and listed it up for $100, and then we get an instant sale. But the sell-through rate said that there were about six sales for this camera and only one listing. So that really tells me that if I was able to get my price point correct, I should see a really quick sale. I was pretty surprised by three minutes though. That was pretty damn lightning. Um, but that there is a really cool sale because it's a $100 average sale price. We paid $300, as you guys know, for the lot of cameras. Um, and we're gonna put this one into a box that will only ship off for $8.50. So I really think that film and digital compact cameras like these are really, really cool items to find because they are quite easy to ship off. As long as you use your butcher's paper, your bubble wrap, you put it into a box. Um, you can get some really high average sale price and a lot of people have these old cameras and they don't value the resale value of them. They don't think that they could be worth $100 in present day, um, but they are. They're all worth about $100. Depending on which ones you have, you could get even more. Um, so that was an awesome sale. We do have a better one though. A better camera has come in for number one. All right, and this is number one. How good is this? We showed this earlier in the video, the Pentax K1000. An incredibly clean camera, an incredibly sought after camera on eBay. And I say sought after because a bit like the other camera I was telling you guys about, the sell through rates for this are incredible. I think there's nine listed right now on eBay for the K1000, but there are uh, 41 or 42 sales for this camera. Now, the beauty of that is that we've got a great sell through rate on this product, but we've also got a complete set for this product as well. So there's an amazing lens here, which is a, I think a three or a 30 to 200 millimeter. As you can see there, it's a monster lens on that one. Um, we've got a small additional lens to the 50 millimeter lens that sits on this. So we're able to market this up as a three, a three lens listing. So it's a bit of a bulk buy, right? Um, this lens here was really, really nice as well. It's a much smaller lens, um, but there it is there in great condition, so clean. Um, this was the 28 millimeter lens, 50 millimeter lens, and then the big one that went up to 200. Um, love the fact that this has got its original manual as well, which you don't often see. It's got some effect filters as well, and the effect filter is actually sitting on this already. You can see it's quite darkened out there with that filter that can pop off on top. Uh, it has an original flash as well that's sitting in its box, which is a cool feature. That just sits on top of the camera like that. Uh, and it's got its original Pentax box as well, a uh, little, little case that they used to do for the digital, oh, sorry, for the film cameras. Um, so she's given me all of the notes here on it. We've got a really nice bag, a vintage bag that's going to come along with this bundle. And I had a look at the listing value of this camera on its own with the 50 millimeter lens, and it was worth about $350. So with a really good sell through rate, the fact that we have the flash, the fact that we have a couple of additional lenses, we have the manual, the fact that the condition of the item is so good as well, I probably could have listed this up for $500. I probably could have put an extra 150 bucks on it, especially with the sell through rate that it was. But two days ago, I listed this up for $450. I went a little bit less. So basically the additional features of this product was an extra 100 bucks, which is probably not quite its value. It's probably worth more than that. Uh, and we got it. We got a $450 sale price on this item we bought all of the cameras for $300. So that was a really important thing that I was considering when I was selling it. Um, 450 bucks, when you take fees and postage, it's pretty much gonna get us about $350 in revenue back in our pocket, which actually profits us off the purchase that we made off Diana by $50. And then we went ahead and sold that other digital camera as well for hundred bucks. So we're probably a little over hundred dollars in profit so far on the deal. And we've got another 12 or 13 cameras to still try and sell. Um, so an incredible sale, it's made for an epic weekend, $700 in sales yesterday, $450 of that coming in just this one sale here. But like I touched on with the other digital camera, I think film cameras and digital cameras, lenses, accessories, filters, whatever the case may be, it's just an amazing high value category to get your hands on. And as long as you do an overall assessment and make sure there's no cracks on the lens or there's nothing, no dirt or marks or anything like that, you're generally gonna be pretty fine with it. 
And if you put in a return policy to say that if there's any issues, you'll be happy to return it for 100% return, I think you'll sell a lot of them pretty quickly. So as you can see, I've made a bit of a dent in the shipping, which is something that Courtney would normally do. I've got my small satchels there, my envelopes ready to go, and then there's some medium satchels ready to go as well. But it is midday and I actually have a mentoring session booked in. So here's my little makeshift tripod for the laptop. And I'm about to jump on and talk to Bailey for the very first time, who is a beginner eBay seller. And he just wants some words of advice to get himself up and running on the right foot. And that is something that I am absolutely happy to provide. So I'm gonna jump on now, 12 to one, try and get this post over by two o'clock. And then we'll get over and do some thrifting, I think, to finish off the day. Hello, Bailey. Hey, how are you going? I'm well, mate. How are you? Good, thank you. That's the way. You can hear me loud and clear. I'm going to go ahead and put that chat into the members group. So those who are a channel member will get that one hour long chat that we just had then with Bailey. I thought it was a really, really good mentoring session because I feel like he's, he's just at that point where he can really take off with his eBay store. He's got 225 active listings. He's only sold 59 items, but he's just hit his top rated seller status because he's been able to achieve 100 transactions for the year. So great interview, great chat. Looking forward to sharing it to the members of the group. I've also got a members draw that I'm gonna be doing later in the video for Babylon 5, which was a members giveaway for any new channel members that just joined. Um, so go ahead and join if you haven't already to be a channel member because that video is about to come out. I also just had a delivery on the garage door while I was doing this mentoring session and I'm very excited that Bear Performance Nutrition, Nick Bear over in America, based out of Texas, who I follow on YouTube, one of the few YouTubers that I watch consistently. Um, Kate, my girlfriend, has just bought me a present without me even realizing and it's my favorite hat that they, they do, the Go One More CL Athletics hat. This thing is incredible. It's a five panel, which I absolutely love. And it's come out of Texas, straight to my door here in Australia. So I'm gonna whack this one on the dome and we're gonna go out and do some thrifting. So it is currently 2.30. All of our listings are done. The post is now dropped off and I'm about to go out and do some thrifting. I've been thinking long and hard about just the way that I'm operating each day and running things by myself over the last week. And I really do think that I could probably handle things myself. I think Courtney's been able to make it so much more efficient, um, you know, in the work that she's done over the last year and nine months that it's actually got so much so that I could just simply do it myself. And I can save a lot of money doing it myself as well. So I think at least until the end of the year, as I touched on earlier in the video, I'm definitely not gonna make any decisions around hiring anyone, um, but I don't think I'm actually in the new year gonna hire anybody administratively from an eBay standpoint. You see, looking at the numbers, as you saw earlier today, we're actually only, we're down 5% in revenue. And when you hire somebody, you really wanna see an incremental gain, like a, a real big jump in the money that you make. And as, as great as Courtney was, unfortunately, we weren't seeing that return financially. And that makes it really constricting and really tough to kind of justify the continuation of when you're not seeing those gains. So based on the fact that we aren't really progressing as we want to financially having Courtney in the hot seat, I don't think I need to go ahead and rehire somebody. I can probably just take it on as I touched on. So I've got this extra amount of money that I didn't have two weeks ago that's gonna now start to come in on a weekly basis. And I think I'm actually gonna to look to put some of it towards a video editor. Um, I've, look, I've been making videos on this channel myself for the last four years and I'm no video editor. I've never been trained in it. Um, I've just been self-taught and hopefully you guys are enjoying the videos that I'm actually producing. But I really do think that somebody out there with a better editing product, uh, a better editing software and also just a better skill set in the form of video editing can, can help grow this channel even more so by just creating better videos. So that's my thought process. I'm going to look to trial some people this year. And then next year, try and lock somebody down to do my two videos every single week. Um, so we'll see how that goes. It's just gonna be a different approach. I'm gonna take 100% responsibility for eBay. Like I said, I think we can project at least $10,000 a month in sales on eBay with just myself doing it, certainly with the efficiencies that we've now got. And uh, I, I think it's been good to kind of sit back for the last three weeks and come to that conclusion. 
Uh, really look at the numbers, look at the workload, look at the future goals that I've got set for myself and where our priorities lie. And I think that's gonna be a really good new plan of attack. What's tricky as well is that this is the busiest time of the year as an eBay seller. You've got October, November and December all leading up to the Christmas period where you want to be trying to find as much stock as you possibly can. Um, so we're out thrifting today for that as we've, we've got listings scheduled up for the next couple of days. But I'm just preempting what's to come, which is going to be a really, really hectic three months to round out this year. Um, so I'm back here at my local op shop. We're going to go in. We're going to try and find some stuff that we can flip for a profit. My fingers are crossed. Here's a spot that I absolutely love to have a pick from, 50 cent DVD tubs. I had a bit of a dig through all of these DVDs and I actually found this one right here, Lano and Woodley, The Complete Adventures. Some sales on eBay go for about $30 and this only cost me 50 cents. So that was a great start to our day. I jumped into the next store and I found this one here. It was the um, Vampire Diaries. It was season one to five. This is a partial set. So I thought $15 was a little bit steep and it proved to be the case on eBay. It only sells for about $30. Uh, so I had to leave that one behind. I'm absolutely loving the book section, guys. I'm always buying these complete sets. This one here though, for just the $5 going into 26, probably wasn't quite worth my while. However, if you were desperate for, for stock, you could probably go ahead with that strike. I've got this one as well. This was a hard covered book set of uh, the Diary Fairies or Fairy Diaries. Um, it was basically the Disney series. The hard cover book set was going for about 85 odd dollars. So I felt like that was pretty good. I've got eight. I might list this one up for about 50 to 60 bucks and we'll see how we go. But the books are definitely a category to focus on guys. I'm having a lot of success, especially in the kids section. They're usually a little bit cheaper. So a pretty quiet day in the thrift, to be honest with you. I've only bought those couple of items and only about 70 or 80 dollars worth of value. So I'm going to have to get back out into the trenches tomorrow and look for a few more things. Um, look, I've got Babylon season one to four. It goes for about 60 to $70. I'm doing that as a members giveaway. It's ultimately a free months or I should say a free year's worth of channel membership. Um, the person that's won that giveaway from last week's draw is Laura Page. Uh, so congratulations, Laura. That one's going to be sent out to you. If you could just send me a message on Instagram, I'll send that out to you in the mail today. Um, if you want to be in the draw to win the next item, I'm going to put it here on screen. This one's up for grabs. To join as a channel member, all you need to do is go onto the homepage, hit join. We're going to be doing weekly live streams of listing sessions. And basically, I'm going to be there to have a chat to you guys uh, once a week, once we can get a couple more members into the group. We're almost there. So if you're at this part of the video, guys, I highly recommend you go ahead and join as a member. A lot more content coming out, including the video that I'm just about to make, which is that interview that I had with Bailey uh, yesterday. So if you love this video, guys, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and go and watch this video right here because it is very, very similar to this one. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you soon.